Hey guys, welcome back. This is Mark with Cinder Fitness. And in today's video, we are starting part one in a series for running. So in this video, the primary focus will be form and technique. It doesn't matter if you're a beginning runner or if you're somebody who's ran a marathon or any other distance and uh, just wants to get a little bit more improvement. Now, that being said, rule one of any coach when it comes to running mechanics or endurance athletes is to not automatically change how they do their work unless there's either A, the person is prone to injury or is injured, B, the person is not being as efficient as he or she would like to be, or C, this individual wants to go faster. So, without further ado, let's talk about some of the tools that we'll be using today. All right, now there are a lot of supplements that are out in the market that can really boost your performance in and out of the gym when it comes to physical activity. This is not one of them, right? Not a plug, just a preference, that's all. So you might be asking, Mark, how do Lay's potato chips make me a better runner? You'll have to watch the rest of this video to find out. And here's gonna be our other tool for today, a good old pencil right? Preferably one that does not have a sharpened end, but you don't have to use a pencil. If you have um, a stick lying around or uh, even a straw, something that is of this, roughly this, the size of a pencil, this size right here, this is going to work also to help us with our form and our technique. So the first thing that we're going to focus on is the concept of running tall. Now running tall does not mean that you're not, uh, up and down north and south. But what it does mean is that you are elongated through your torso and your spine and your eyes on the horizon and I'm pulling back my shoulder blades and I'm running tall. That's not running tall. That is. So once again, the shoulder blades are pulled back. And if we draw a straight line from my heel all the way up into my head, that's tall. Now the next thing we're going to focus on is what's called the anatomical position. And this is where we get our shoulder blades to pull back. So if I'm here and I pull my hands back and uh, pause this position and then relax, now I have my shoulder blades pulled back. Once we have that taken care of, we're going to want to make sure that we keep our bodies close together or tight. The more your arms are away from you, the more energy is going to be sent off away from your midline and away from where you're transmitting force into the, uh, the ground. Uh, so we want to kind of run a little bit close together. That's where this guy comes in handy. Okay, so we're right here. We're going to have my fingertips right there. You can do it to your palms if you want. And when I run, I'm going to run like this. Okay, back and forth, back and forth, right here. Now this is really tough for a lot of people to do because there's a lot of people, they run right here or they run up here. This is kind of a goofy little drill but one I teach to a lot to everybody just to demonstrate exactly how much energy is lost if you are not running tight and tall. With my hands right here, I'm going to move my hands, right? There's a whole lot of body motion going on. Remind me of those clubbing days back in the day, right? Right? But if I'm here, there's not as much movement. A lot of movement, a lot of movement. And I'm just moving my arms. Everything else is happening as a result of that, but here. So the idea is basically you have a finite amount of energy while you're per, uh, performing your run from A to B, whether it's around the block, a 5K, 10K, doesn't matter, right? Based on the energy reserves that you've built up that we'll discuss in a later video, and the distance and the effort and the time, you have X amount before you need to, you need to refuel or stop. So every time that you burn a match in your matchbox or your matchbook, right, you don't get it back. You don't get it back until you get a new matchbook. And so what we want to do is we want to conserve energy as we expend it. And one of the first things you can do is to make sure that you're running like this with minimal arm spray, minimal, okay? If it's something that you just can't do, that's fine. I get it. You know, you're, you're going to be that person right here. And that's just understand that you're leaving you're leaving a little bit on the table there when you walk away as far as what you can spend elsewhere. The other one that you want to do is you want to relax 
your face. A lot of times people will grit, they'll hold their breath, they'll, they'll win, so tight, especially when they're under a lot of uh, strain and load. If you're a new runner, you don't even need to be putting out that much energy. But just stay relaxed, okay? Every little bit of energy that you can conserve above the waistline, right, is gonna be giving you energy at your disposal to transmit for the glutes and the hammies, which are the primary muscle groups in the, uh, in the calves, in, the, uh, in a running sequence, right, in a running form. Uh, and, and that's gonna allow you to go longer and further uh, and expend more energy for, towards your goal until you either refuel or your, your race is done. Okay, if it's a shorter race, I mean, you don't need that much energy reserves, right? You wanna transfer everything you have into that 5K to get you from A to B. If it's a little bit longer, you're gonna to have to refuel similar uh, along the way. But once again, we can stay, we can stay with the hands close, tall spine, pull back those shoulder blades, breathe from the ribs, right? We feel elongation through the abdominal wall. If we can do this, that's gonna be more energy that we can spare up here to be used for down there. Cool? Okay, so we have the upper half squared away. We have our shoulder blades pulled back, we're lifting up to the, the, uh, the, the spine, we're having a tall spine, and we're keeping our arms close to our bodies. All right, so, now, once I'm here, I'm gonna have my energy conserved for all that power for the actual run. Now we need to remember that we wanna fall forward just a little bit. So, what I like to do is teach people Pull up your knee until your foot just comes off of the floor, right? And then I'm going to come forward. That is where you should have contact when you're running. A lot of times, and it's been cleaned up a lot over the years, but a lot of times people tell me that they were taught to run heel, ball, toe. And it does look like it. If you take a look at a lot of the videos or photos of people running and they're so dynamic and they're just they're like this and the legs are just you know flying through the air and all that good stuff okay that that looks you know for the magazine that looks really awesome but in generally speaking that's not how you're going to run okay so once again we're tall we'll pull up that leg it's going to swing a little bit we're going to hinge forward until it stops now i'm going to change legs so you can see what i'm talking about once i'm here and I'm leaning in, right? This make this contact right here. My back leg should be pushing a little bit harder, and that's my push off. Okay, that's my push off. So that's a contact. But here's the thing: once I'm here, that's my push off, right? And that's where the power is. So that's where your glute, your hip, is open. The glute is firing, and I am pushing all my weight right there. Now, one way you can develop a little bit of that activation and how it's supposed to feel is by using a glider. Okay, so here we go. Here's that glider I was talking about. All right, so we put them down. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push until I feel this hip flexor stretching. And if you notice my position here, right, it should be very similar to what I showed you earlier when we just simply have the leg swing, just barely up the floor, and then we did our step, okay? So you're at home, you wanna develop and get with, it, with that feeling, that connection, that neuromuscular junction between your head and literally your butt, right here, the glute firing. So get that glider and put one, two. So this leg is static, it's not doing anything, it's stationary. Three, see how the back heel comes up? Hip flexor is open. Glute is firing, you should feel this stretching and this working. And just keep going, do 10 of them. And if you put your weight, if you put your weight where it's supposed to be, I'm lined up right here, okay? If you put your weight where it's supposed to be, you're not gonna do the splits. If you do that, yeah, you're gonna do the splits. But if you're following the mechanics, you're picking that leg up and I'm coming forward so I make contact, then that hip is open, that glute's firing, and you're pushing yourself off. Okay, so use the glider, and let's go ahead, and let's hit 10 of them for each leg. And then you'll see what I'm talking about. That hip flexor, you're gonna feel it stretching, and you're gonna feel that glute firing. 
Okay, so I'm gonna put this together and actually do a little bit, a little run. When we run, say here's my midline, right? Here's my midline. That's me. That's this is my this is my from my torso up. When I run, when you run, if you want to follow this along and to find out the max efficiency, you can either run like this, and that's that person. Okay? And they're running, they're running like that. And every time they land, that heel and that knee and that hip, every time they land on that heel. A shock wave goes right through their body. It goes from the heel, ankle, the knee, the hip. It's going to transfer over into the spine. It can find its way up into the upper back and even all the way up into your neck. All right? So when you jam, the first thing, when you jam that heel down, you overstride, that first thing you're going to do is you are going to put a tremendous amount of shock wave through the body. Now, if you're efficient, most people are going to do 70 to 90 footfalls per minute. And how many minutes are you out there? Think about that shock wave that's being sent up every single time over the course of 15, 20, 30 minutes, hour, right? So right off the bat, just talking about that is enough that you should not want to overstride. So we're here and I have my overstride, right? How do we fix it? There. So the distance between my feet never changes. The only thing that changes is where my center of gravity is, and that is gonna be more efficient. So when you do that, the thing is to think about not stepping so far forward. However, you wanna really push out the back. That's gonna engage those glutes Right? It's going to open that hip flexor up, it's going to engage the glutes, and you're going to be pushing your power forward. So when you see me run the demonstration, hopefully what you're noticing is that I'm getting a lot of distance with each one of those push-offs. So here's a little bit of a breakdown. Notice the red line going from the ball of my foot all the way through my crown. This is a uh, falling forward tall position. Hands are close carry. Knee, uh, the forward leg is up, but not too much. I'm not overstriding and uh, just keeping everything nice and calm. Here we are, footfall, and directly in line with my center of gravity. Nothing changes, no overstriding. And then finally the push off. And we go right back into that tall posture, falling forward, minimal leg swing, making sure I am progressing forward. What's happening is I am not stepping too far but I'm leaning forward just a bit. And the concept of falling forward, carrying your momentum through. Remember when I was talking about that split stance, right? Okay, so think about this also. Besides the fact that a tremendous shockwave is going into your joints if you overstride, okay? You're overstriding. Looks awesome, right? You're, all, you're like this, looks awesome, but it's not effective. And also, why? Because each time your foot stops in front of your center of gravity, you are putting on the brakes. You are slowing down. All right, so this is almost wrapping up what we're gonna be talking about today, uh, and that's all about that form. We start off by one, just practicing a tall posture, a tall spine. We're gonna do that anatomical position, right? Pulling back the shoulder blades, and then once we're here, we're gonna relax the arms. Just kind of relax them, right? Anatomical position, relax them. After we relax them, we're gonna bring them up. We're gonna do our best to carry them right here, using a stick, a straw, a pencil, and just running with light, light, light contact. Light contact. When we run, we're gonna focus on leaning forward. Now, remember, up and down doesn't mean a tall spine. Tall spine is point to point. So if I'm tall here and I lean forward, I'm still tall, nothing changes. But now I can go ahead and I, as I take my step, my uh, ball of foot is directly below me and then I push off, okay? Just like we did in the video. To practice this, we're gonna go ahead and use a glider or anything that will help us slide. 
Tall posture, we can pull back the shoulder blades, this will help us with that anatomical position, and then push, 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 right? Because that's basically what it's gonna look like when we do our run, or at least it should. And now you're asking me, but Mark, what about the potato chips? Full circle. It's about conserving energy, all right? And the main reason why I pick Lay's potato chips is as a former USA triathlon coach, one of the symposiums we went to is they gave us these little chips. And they're super thin and they're very easy to break. And that's why we use them, okay? So I'm gonna hold it right here, okay? And when I run, once I get the ability to run with my hands close to my body, when I run, I'm gonna practice having just that light, light, light finger contact grip with that chip. If I break my chip, I know that I'm putting an excessive amount of stress into my upper body, which is gonna rob me of the energy that I need in the lower half. All right, so we're running, we're running, we're running. Tall spine, right? Try to run as relaxed as possible, take, keeping that, that uh, anatomical position, the shoulder rate retraction, breathing from our ribs. Every now and then, do some cleansing breaths. It's gonna help relax the body. All right, guys, so that's today's video. We are going to be uh, focusing on um, other aspects of running technique and form and exercises that you can employ for sports specific uh, uh, to, to the running. But for right now, we're thinking about running tall, tall spine, tall posture. We're thinking about pulling back those shoulder blades, breathing from our, uh, our rib cage area. And we're gonna think about not overstriding. Practice those glider moves, practice those glider moves get the feeling of what it feels like to have your hips open, your glutes firing, and not overstriding. And then, at the end, eat your chips. Mmm. Energy. Hey guys, so that wraps up this video, part one in our running series, Form and Mechanics. Um, get out there, give them a shot. If you have any questions, you know, leave some comments below for me or email me at mark at cinderfitness.com. As always, these videos are uh, up and accessible at my website. And uh, please like and subscribe, share, and uh, take care of yourselves. And until the next time, I'll see you when I see you. Mm. Training hard. <laughs>